A Catholic priest that I've come to know and love and read all of his stuff is named Richard Rohr. And he says, all great spirituality is really about unlearning things. And I want to tell you that in recovery, a lot of what recovery looks like is unlearning some of the things that we used to do and live and learn and base our life upon. Your next comment might be, well, unlearning what? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. For me, I had to unlearn old patterns of communication that simply weren't going to work in this new marriage that we were trying to launch and birth. Old patterns of sexual behavior, old approaches to sexuality in our marriage were not going to make it into recovery. Old ways of dealing with anger and old ways of dealing with resentment and old ways of seeing Samantha had to be unlearned. I mean, I had to unlearn so much about my own lifestyle and how I was going to live if I was going to see my marriage restored. And recovery in many ways is about unlearning things that we have developed, unlearning patterns that we have developed over 10, 20, 30, even longer years. Sometimes we have bought into so many lies or we have believed so many stories that we have told ourselves about our spouse that recovery helps us start to unlearn those things. You say, well, what is unlearning? How do we unlearn? And, and really, I'll tell you, how you unlearn is by taking action and educating yourself or learning what is going to work. That's why in all of these video blogs, I'm constantly going to push you towards the free boot camp that's on the website towards the EMS Weekend or the EMS Online or Harboring Hope for Betrayed Spouses or Hope for Healing for Unfaithful because as you're learning, as you're growing, as you're intentional, you are systematically unlearning so many of the things that you bought into or the lies that you believed about your spouse or even about yourself. So how do you unlearn? Man, you're focused, you're intentional, you dive head first into a process of recovery. It doesn't mean that you know if you're going to save your marriage. It doesn't mean that you know if your marriage is going to make it. It means that you are willing to be serious and intentional about unlearning so many things that you have bought into as an adult. Just the other day, for example, Samantha and I went through this uh, personality test, if you will, called the Enneagram. And it's pretty extensive. And we went through it, and then we were reviewing our results together. And we sat on the couch, we were drinking a glass of wine, and I will tell you that we laughed harder than we have laughed in months at just the results of each other's test. It was hilarious how, in many ways, the test completely, with a laser sighting, just broke down what we kind of default to in conflict, in physical intimacy, in uh, judgmentalism, if you will, or criticism or what have you. I mean, it just was phenomenal to go through. I mean, we took a good hour, hour and a half to read through the results and laugh about how accurate the results were. It wasn't perfect. There were some things where we both went, eh, not really, but then there was so much more where we were like, wow, this is like spot on. And so then what we did is we each printed out a document that we felt like these are the results that are most accurate that we want each other to know about us to constantly be aware of. Now, Samantha printed out a two-page single-space document that I thought, well, this is fantastic. I'm just going to kind of remind myself of these things. It was awesome. She said, you should memorize all that. And I said, oh, I'll have it done by tomorrow. It was just fun. My document was like one page, one page, double spaced, kind of like, hey, here's some key points. That was perfectly... Uh, ex exemplifying how our results were in our personality uh, profile. But we're still working at marriage. No, not working at infidelity, recovery, 
but working at marriage, working at, though we've come 23 some odd years, we'd still like to go 23 more years. And so let me tell you that one of the biggest enemies to your recovery early on and to the uh, long-term restoration of your marriage is stagnation. As long as you continue to not do any work, not put the effort in, as long as it's always convenient, it's always easy, it's always simple, it doesn't cost you anything, there's no sacrifice, I promise you, you're going to feel your recovery struggle. You're going to see your momentum within your recovery slowly but surely, or maybe even very quickly, disintegrate. You see, I promise you, you have not come this way before in life. The way that you used to live, is not going to be a match for the monstrosity of difficulty that recovery will present to you at times. You have not come this way before. You cannot use old methods, you cannot use old keys to unlock new doors within your spouse and within your recovery. You're going to have to get expert help. You're going to have to find new keys to unlock new doors within the heart of your spouse. So if you think that you can just do what you did for this little crisis here or that little difficulty there, I'm sorry, it's probably going to just frustrate you and maybe even make things worse because you have not come to this level of crises before. So you're going to have to get a new level of help, a new level of wisdom, a new level of even sight on how to see this difficulty in a way that brings healing and redemption. And when I say that you've not come this way before, alternatively, some of you maybe have come this way before, and maybe this isn't your first affair, or maybe this isn't your first approach at recovery, and what you did before didn't work, or maybe worked for a year or two. Well, I got to tell you, it didn't work. And the last thing that you want to do is remain prideful enough to think that you've got this when you thought that you had this before and it didn't work. One of the most difficult conversations I have is with an unfaithful spouse who says, you know, I just... I know what I need to do. I don't need anybody to tell me what I need to do. I've got this. And then I typically say, well, how are things going right now since you've got this? Most of the time, the answer is they are not going well at all. And so I just want to ask you, I, want to, I, I just want to appeal to you to humble yourself, to find a new method and a new approach that just might be exactly what you both 